these are, are, are in, in my view and many other people's view, so valuable. since 1973 <laughs> so it's exactly 50 years and I'm still still doing little bits of tea I was teaching just uh, two weeks ago in in Burundi in Central Africa just just for a, a week and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a very keen lifelong teacher I was a head teacher for 10 years in the in, in the 90s and then I became a teacher educator uh, which gave me an opportunity to go into loads and loads and loads of, of primary schools. And increasingly through that time, I saw the, the value of TAs. There was uh, no question in my mind that they were, they were bearing the major load of work with, with children with special uh, needs and, and disabilities. They were bearing the major role in, in, in terms of, of, of fulfilling any advice given to, to the school, simply because of the other massive pressures on teachers. So I've always been interested ever since I was a head teacher when there were, I mean, I started being a head teacher in 92 and, uh, in, uh, and I was the first head teacher in my, in my city to employ a classroom assistant then because because I could you know I could see the value and that that value just grew in my opinion as a as a head and as I say when I was visiting loads of schools on teaching practice for students and so on I you know it, it confirmed it still further and then as a as a researcher I became more and more interested in in the work that arts were, were the, the role that arts were playing in in children's well-being and in particular in terms of their educational and social well-being and so i started working with speech bubbles this organization that i've been now um, doing research on for well for about 10 years but also other arts organizations and again it's almost always the TAs that were involved in that and not the classroom teachers. And I've, I've seen the most transformative experience in children through, through my 10 plus years of association with it. Um, real, real change coming in, 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 in lots of children, positive change in terms of confidence, positive change in terms of contribution, positive change in terms of their ability to make friends, their ability to work to the best of their ability. And, and those things all came through exposure to a, a marvelous program, which I'll just describe very briefly over a period of between 20 and 30 weeks, um, one session per week of those 20 and 30 weeks. Um, children with speech and language difficulties got together in groups of no more than 10 plus a TA and worked with an actor to act out the story that a child had told the week before. So every child had an opportunity to, to tell them to make up their own story, have it written down by the actor, and then the actor the following week would get all 10 children with speech and language language difficulties to act out the story and that happened for some children three times through the year and that kind of personal emotional involvement it was their story it was their words the actors simply wrote down exactly what the children said even if the grammar was wrong even if the children used bad well they, they probably wouldn't use swear words but they were they were, they were uh, you know, in, 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 whatever the child said, I mean, I remember one child couldn't really speak and the child just said, mum, that was the story. And the actor got 10 children to act out 10 different ways that the, the, the mum looked and walked when she was tired, when she was happy, when she was going home, when she was coming back and that, you know, lots and lots of things like that. So even a, even a one word, even children that were mute we're telling stories with thumbs up and thumbs down. Were you a superhero? Yes. Was the superhero the same name? Yes. And, and, and so on. So, so th there was no barrier to that story being the child's one. There was no barrier 
to the child enjoying the acting out of their play. The key to me was that actually the TAs were crucial in that because for the first time, they were given permission to play alongside the children, to, to actually be like the children. They weren't there for discipline. They weren't there for control. They weren't there to make sure that they, they, they spoke the right grammar. They were there simply to play alongside the children. So they were dragons, they were superheroes, they were whatever the children had got in their stories. They were fish, they were submarines, they were castles, all sorts of things. And of course, as you said, the, uh, the, uh, the TAs with very little, um, very little qualification in, ter in, terms, uh, in terms of training, some of them were very worried about it. You know, they didn't like the idea of being silly um, with the children because they hadn't, you know, they hadn't had that experience. But really quickly, they 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 entered into it, and increasingly, I'd say virtually a hundred percent of them said, you know, I'm really enjoy. This is what I come to school for because I'm playing alongside the children. I'm enjoying being with them, and my relationship with them back in class in the rest of the week is is transformed. Of course they behave, of course they, they, they don't take advantage, but they speak to me in, in e even more friendly and, and, and they, they come to me and they tell me about bits of their story that they really liked and so on. So I began to see the, the TAs as being absolutely central and central in communicating what was happening to the children back to the teachers because of course the teachers weren't there many of the tas saw their own confidence building through playing alongside the children and through realizing that that emotional and personal starting point was a good starting point for any learning not just language and communication learning very very often the tas come from the community that the children come from and often the teachers don't. The teachers tend to travel longer distances to come into school. And the, the fact that the TAs are the bridge between the community and the school has, for many of them, came out in my interviews with them. You know, that they were able to explain to the parents what was happening in speech bubbles. They were able to explain to the, ask the parents, had it made any difference at, at home? Had the parents noticed any difference and so on? And so that 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 role as a as a as a kind of community bridge was, was really really uh, again something I wasn't kind of expecting until it it it, it arose from from the interview. I think it's a, a matter of being prepared to meet those children on on a personal and emotional level without wanting to be their buddy or their friend, but ju just sort of finding what it is that makes that child's eyes sparkle. You know, if it's if it's horses or football or superheroes or model cars or travel or, or you know whatever it is find that out and build any of your interactions whether it's to do with maths or 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 or, or, or english or, or geography or history or pe build that knowledge of that child's personal life into your relationship and don't be afraid to play it's the simplest agenda just play along with the children and do their play with them no other agenda and, and the other thing i think to stress that I'd like to stress is that it, I, I'm never suggesting through my this research and other research that it's a, it's a sort of the only thing. Of course, there's a right time for for structure, but for that kind of formal structure, there is a role for that. There is a role for for sort of tradition, if you like, traditional um, approaches, but. Don't forget the play. Don't forget okay. the the re okay. relax the emotional. Don't forget the creative. Don't forget the things that are uh, and are designed to provoke the imagination.